All right, here we go. We're gonna make pot de choux. Um, and to make pot de choux, I'm gonna get this out of the way here. Uh, to make pot de choux, I'm gonna bring my milk, my water, my butter, and my salt up to a boil, which I have done. I've turned it down just a little bit to show you what we're doing. And I tried to get you a pretty good view here. Let me see if I can ooh, even get it better. No, it might be as good as I'm gonna get. Okay, we're gonna leave it there. Um, I'm gonna add my flour. And I'm gonna add this flour, I'm gonna turn my heat up. Uh, and it's gonna get really, it's gonna look exactly like, what we're doing is we're making a roux. Um, I'm gonna get my flour in here. And I'm gonna add this. Uh, what pot de choux is, uh, was, was exactly what we're making, but pot de choux is a big part of the bakery. Um, and it is a profiterole, it is an eclair, it's a cream puff in the hot food, it's a goujade, um, it is uh, a roux. And so what we've done is, like I said, we brought our milk, our water, our butter, our salt up to a boil. And what I want to show you is, and I might steam this up a little bit, is how long you cook it. The longer you cook it, like I've always said, I tell you guys this all the time, the longer you cook the pot de choux, the more scum, I'm going to show you the scum on the bottom of my pot. I don't have enough yet. Uh, the better the rise. And really, we're concentrating. We're cooking it down just like we do a roux in the hot food kitchen. Um, and I'm going to continue to cook it. So it's all come together. And you can see I look like some mashed potatoes. Uh, but I want to cook it a little longer. Everyone pulls it right now because they're like, oh, it's done. Sometimes you can get some lumps. Smash your lumps. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, you can see I'm cooking it. And what I have at the bottom of my pot, I have this kind of scum that's building up. I want to keep cooking it a little bit longer because like I said everyone pulls it a little early and you're not going to get all those eggs in it and it's going to be flotta choux <laughs> which I think this chef Scott came up with that um, and we're not going to get all the eggs we want to get into it and that's not going to give us the rise and it's not going to give us the look we want really a pot de choux is a shell or a vessel that's going to hold some cream or mousse or cheese or deliciousness um, and it's pretty amazing stuff. So we're going to cook this roux, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get it on the mixer, and we're going to start adding our eggs. Um, and you can see I have a pretty good scum going on the bottom of the pot. Ooh, that's a pretty good picture right there. Uh, and I'm going to pull it now, and I'm going to show you what I want it to look like when we start adding it to the mixer. My pot de choux is cooked all the way, at least my base. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is get it on the mixer with a paddle. I have my eggs. Uh, we're going to start adding them. As soon as our pot de choux cools down a little bit, we don't want to cook those eggs. So I'm going to get it all in here, my base, and like I said, I cooked it like I showed you. You don't want to take it off too soon. We have a tendency to pull it when we think it's come together. And that's what we're looking for. What leavens pot de choux is the eggs we're about to incorporate. I'm going to show you the bottom of my pot. And they're a pain in the neck to clean, but it means you've made that last piece. You can see my pot. That's what I was going for. Like I said, the longer you cook it, the better rise you get out of it, the more eggs you get into it. So it's all it's all a positive. So I'm going to let this, you can see my steam coming out the top. I'm going to let it cool down and paddle itself down a little bit. Because uh, I don't want to add the eggs too soon. If I add those eggs too soon, I'm going to cook them and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to come back here in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to show you how I check to see the the right temperature. We're going to start adding our eggs. Looks like we've cooled down enough to start adding our eggs. What I what I'll try to do, and a lot of times if I'm using a hot product, is I feel the bottom of my bowl. So like right here, if it's cooled off a little bit um, and I can touch it, then it's just right for me adding my eggs. So I try and add two eggs at a time. If you get three in there, it's fine, and you're not going to burn anything. Uh, what's going to happen if you have cold eggs and warm pot de choux base? And so they're going to tend to separate and not look right, and then the pot de choux kind of hits the side of the bowl. We're going to add two eggs. We're going to scrape the bowl, um, we're going to add two eggs, we're going to let it paddle, we're going to scrape the bowl, we're going to do that all the way through, we're adding eight eggs total. Um, and we're going, to make, we're going to make sure each time we stop the machine and we scrape really well. It's a big part of it because a lot of that pot de choux hits the side uh, and sticks to the side and we want it to incorporate really well and it's not going to do that. It's stuck to the side of our bowl. Here we go. I'm ready to add two more eggs. There we go. Get them in there. And I'm going to do this all the way through. I'm going to stop here so you don't have to suffer through it all. Uh, and when I hit add eggs and I get them all incorporated, I'm going to show you exactly what we're looking for. Sometimes we might leave an egg out if it looks like it's going to get a little too thin. After the sixth, I'm going to show you what we're looking for in just a minute. 